the ad in our day. We do have one more match coming your way. And this one will be fought out between the Houston Outlaws and the Vancouver Titans. So let's chat about those two teams. Let's take a quick look at their starting lineups. Of course, Vancouver Titans currently sitting on a 3-3 three, three, uh, three, three score. They've been a team which really impressed us. Uh, I think recently they've been uh, riding that high. They've been uh, playing a lot better than most people would have expected them heading into this season, but they're proving that they are for real. Um, they're bringing in the heat, not just on the server, <laughs> but also outside of it. All right, just beat the Hughes Batlaws and Scrims. Good logo right Already there. Already setting the Love tone. Them. Let's yeah. see if they can yeah. do it in the match. I Love, mean, that's what we're here. Right? Yeah. There. That's, that's, a, that's a great artist that made that, I would yeah, say. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> It's a little bit like Barra from <laughs> Other than that, uh, let's take a look at, of course, uh, the Houston Outlaws, a team which has been up on top of things. Uh, they are scary opponents, and if the match against the Mayhem yesterday is any indicator, is they're 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 one of those teams to beat. Like Atlanta's on the top, but then then Houston has got to be like right at the heel of them. So Vancouver Titans has to punch upward for this one. Yeah, I think that top echelon is very competitive. And, and Vancouver, they were my underdog team. They are a team I'm excited to watch, but I think this might be too tough for them. I think so far, Houston, they, I mean, they won the match that I think was the more challenging one yesterday against the Florida Mayhem. We'll see if Titans can, can you know, shake any of that dominance. But I do see Titans as a, a dive team as well, right? Like that's what's been looking best for them is with Sugar Free playing these flankers. I think he's going to have very, very challenging opponents here. The, uh, the Houston Outlaws look like one of the best dive teams in the league, so they're going to have to beat them on their strong suit, which, you know, I think it would be tough for anybody. And, and I do want to give kind of Punk his flowers a little bit because I think Punk is someone who's gone through a lot of trials and tribulations in his, in his career and has really stepped up, I think, to be kind of the main stalwart, main tank of this Vancouver Titans roster and this, like, veteran presence that I think really helps Aspire and Sugar Free. But also, you're going up against what Harsha used to call a cheat code in a Winston, right? Fearless just has this propensity to just never die, knows every ins and outs of that hero. And it's going to be a lot for Punk and the rest of the Vancouver Titans to deal with. And even if you get past Fearless on that dive, you've got four other players that you can argue at the top of their game. So this is a lot for Vancouver to really ascend in terms of that mountain climb. But I think that they do have like a chance to make some things happen. It'll probably be very Houston favored, but don't count out Titans just yet. Yeah, and I think uh, Houston Atlas has, they have to be aware of that. And I'm yeah. pretty sure they studied up and did their homework heading into this match. However, if we're looking at our predictions, uh, I mean, <laughs> this has got to be Houston all the way. Not to say that we don't want Vancouver Titans to succeed, <laughs> you know, like it's kind of, they're the winners of our hearts for now. Yeah. But if we have to go with pure number based, Houston Atlas has the upper hand here. Yeah, Houston is the dark horse, and or rather, sorry, Vancouver's the dark horse. <laughs> Houston is a white shining stallion. Yeah, right exactly. There. Right. Like... Yeah. So Houston, I think they're going to run away with this. I don't think it's going to be too close. I think Vancouver's better suited to take on opponents who aren't as comfortable in the dive matchup. Um, but I think anything's possible. I think you're right. There have been a lot of bright spots for the Titans, and I think, you know, if they just start to hit a roll, maybe Houston, you know, trips up and makes any mistakes. Could, could be seeing a competitive match, but again, the fans agree. They don't expect to <laughs> yeah. see But I said it yesterday, we're going to try out things. It's like, right. no, 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 now is not the time. Now is not the time. <laughs> so, um, let's take a look. Okay, chat, 93%. So, the biggest beatdown we had so far in chat predictions. But, is it, isn't Atlanta, Vegas, like 97 uh, yeah, it's up there. This is yeah, up there. This is pretty close. This is even more there. extreme than I would say. Like, I would give Vancouver. I was surprised. Seven percent. Maybe seven. Yeah. Eight, I would have thought about double digits. Right. Seven's about right, guys. I would have thought double digits. I was, think, I was thinking, like, maybe five, seven, ten. ten? But, but double know. digits. Like, let's yeah, say. Rich is right. I think double digits. Lot, yeah. yeah. I mean, not, like, significant maybe double digits, but we got double digits. Yeah, so we're, like, we're not angry, but a little disappointed in you, chat. Just saying, just throwing it out there. Like, give, give them some credit. Thank you, the Titans. I mean, yes, but also, no, why, <laughs> why? The Vancouver Titans is just one of those teams that have those personalities on. You kind of want them to succeed, right, Necro and Vicky? Of course you do. I feel like that's definitely something that when you look at the Titans, you're like, oh, they were they were underrated coming into the season, but like, you just love the players on the team. Crimzo, Punk, those are two players that I love watching play the game, and I'm right there with the desk too. How could chat only give them 7%? Like, I thought we were being nice to the Shock. <laughs> you guys are being brutal to the Titans. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I'm not surprised that girl out here because I feel like when you take a look at the who's the gatekeeper team between Aww. these top teams in the lead Aww. and who you've seen from, I, I I gotta say to me at least it's the Titans out here. And that's coming from somebody who loves watching Sugar Free Shine since back Aww. in the day in the contender days that we've gotten to cover him. And uh it, it's difficult because you're facing off against the second best team currently in the league. And the Houston Outlaws, again, to highlight the stakes, if the Houston wins, Houston will be the other team to go to the midseason madness. If they do lose, then Florida is the team to go to the midseason madness. So that is what's on the line here for the Outlaws. But again, it's going to be really difficult for the Titans to see what they can do against probably the second best team in the league right now. Yeah, okay. I, I, I definitely <laughs> am I'm with the desk and chat that the Houston Outlaws should be able to win this match pretty easily. I'm just, I'm just still saying maybe this is some recency bias or like uh, Jake bias coming in here for 93%. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the desk is right though. And at the end of the day, you do have to look at the strength of these dive compositions across the board. The way that the Titans can find success against the Outlaws is to put them into a position where maybe they're playing heroes that are not necessarily as comfortable. So maybe you're looking at being able to get the better of a Pelican Echo. Happy's actually coming out here on the Ash, so maybe you're able to start getting that EMP charge up and running a little bit faster if Happy's not going to start out on that hero and just kind of commit to something really early. Happy with taking a nap and Pelican finding himself in the spawn room doors. Great look here already, opening up this point for the Titans. They're able to win in terms of numbers, and I like the positioning that we're currently seeing from Aspire and Punk, just trying to buy themselves extra time while they are already going to be able to plant that flag on the point first. That was a really quick take there from the Titans. They were able to just go ahead and get that Tracer versus Tracer duel with Pelican, and then putting Happy to sleep as well really left the door wide open for the Titans to be able to go in aggressively, knowing that the Dynamite was off the board. Look at that as well. Sugar Free is just having a time there in the back line. Shu and Violet are really going to have to hold hands here. Gotta look out for that. Ooh, nice little snipe on the anti onto Punk. And Crimzo gets deleted from looking into the sky after Pelican's gonna be able to find him in the back line here. Pelican just trying to split some of that attention away from the Titans and with no supports left for the Titans as Crimzo is trying to make his way outside the spawn doors. Happy's gonna be able to clean up what is left here of the point and they are gonna be able to reclaim this point. I think something that the Outlaws do really well is being able to play when they're up. And so being able to see them have control of the point is really going to help them out here. When they look at Shu's nano boost, really being able to empower Fearless's strong forward position with the Winston. And also just kind of looking at how you might want to play around Pelican's Pulse Bomb, as that's going to be online as well. The only big thing here is that you've got nothing for this EMP. Oh my goodness, the EMP after Shu sends out that nano boost, they're going to be able to isolate him and Happy is going to beat him right back. Going to be able to try to get into this next fight with the Bob online, but this is another great team fight win initiated here from Sugar Free. Punk to get the follow-up right afterwards here, and Fearless just try to jump away, and then he'll just go for a reset with the rest of his team. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that's a reset at oh, all. Wait. I, look, oh, he can't, he can't even get away. He can't even get away. Yeah, he can't even I, get away. I think at that point, Fearless got a little too deep there. Pop the primal, tried to be able to take Crimzo off the board. Actually ended up juggling Crimzo onto the high ground near the spawn. And then you have to be able to try to find a way to get out of there. But because Fearless got so staggered, you're now looking at a position where Abby's gonna have to initiate with this Bob, and you might be coming up on last fight territory depending on how fast Houston Outlaws are being able to get back to this point. We do reclaim it here as the rally is activated from Violet. Bob out of the field now. Something that Titans doesn't have to worry about as they activate the sound barrier. Only lands onto three. Punk having to be careful after getting shield bashed by Violet earlier on. Pelican still trying to harass Crimzo, finding him in that side room. He's got no safety here, no help from Faith to help heal for him. And it's about clearing that side room that was up to Pelican's goal while also enabling Fearless, who has got it hacked by Sugar Free. He's gonna have the EMP going into this next fight, so the Titans are just gonna give the Outlaws the space. You have to. The danger of running the Ana and the Brigida backline here for the Houston Outlaws is, yes, it's very strong against something like a punk dive, but you also run the risk of not having any defensive ultimate there for the Sugar Free EMP, and we saw just how that went last time. Violet doesn't have the rally yet. 
Oh, the EMP lands on the, the back line, but the nano boost from Shu helps out Violet and also shuts down Punk from trying to go for the engagement to get the follow up from there. So losing out on Punk, even just four left here for the Titans, they're gonna still waste more time and it's gonna allow the Outlaws to reach up to that 99% form. Oh, what a great adjustment there from the Outlaws to be able to get that Nano to save Violet in that situation. And that's a great workaround here for the EMP. And they're starting to look really good here. Vicky Outlaws are going to be able to take this round. Overtime taken away and nobody left in sight for the Titans. Punk gets deleted after a nice anti from Shu and the Outlaws take round number one here. Right, so it started off a little rocky there, but I feel like Outlaws sometimes take a little bit to get online and actually feel out how their opponents are going to be playing through that match, you know? Just kind of making sure that they, they've got their T's crossed, their I's dotted, everything kind of in <laughs> line to be able to make sure that they can actually execute on their game plan. So it was, again, a great adjustment there from the Outlaws to play around Sugar Freeze EMP. And at the end of the day, I think that Ash choice was also really nice to be able to help with the coach gun, put some pressure off of the back line, and just make sure that you're also getting some nice dot damage there with the dynamites as well. Makes it more difficult for the Titans to advance. Yeah, and the positioning, too, from the Outlaws in those last two fights were also great. I mean, you saw what she was able to do to help out Violet. Sugar Free was also in a great position. He didn't die once in that first round, too, but he had to disengage because he had no follow potential off of that hole after they lost out on Punk. Coming out of the gates here, you could already see Happy set up on this high ground, putting in some pressure, peppering into Punk. As Aspire is going to be able to also get a reset in into the line of sight of both Crimson and Faith. Nice dyn dynamite on the other side here, but this is going to be the pressure that the Titans are going to have to deal with with an anti just coming in from the other side, landing onto Happy and Violet. And Fearless is going to be sleeping here, but it's that pressure here from this high ground the Titans have to look out for as Crimson gets deleted after he got hit initially from Shu's anti. Fearless was able to clean up what was left of him, but he put himself in an overextending position that Punk was able to capitalize on. Well, at least you're seeing the Titans actually get back to the point before the Houston Outlaws can capture it, so nobody has been able to keep control of the point just yet. As I say that, though, the Titans have been pushed away, and as Punk was trying to go for the reset there, you ended up getting taken out by Pelican. Uh, Fearless is, again, just kind of getting up close and personal with the Titans, and this is a great look and why the desk was giving him so much credit when it comes down to how Fearless approaches this game as a Winston player. Look at how he's locking down the high ground. It's making it very difficult for the Titans to be able to get any sort of territorial control in that manner. And uh, Punk's actually going to take a pretty long detour to actually try to get around the Outlaws. Talk about how we currently see Fearless just getting into position, jumping onto the high ground off to the left here. You can see Punk also trying to approach from the other side. Pelican trying to mark him down, making their way right back to the point. Pelican's got the health back at his feet. If it isn't hacked already by Sugar Freak here, about to get the EMP as he lays down the pulse bomb, sticks it onto Aspire. He's gonna be out of this fight here. Nana boost now onto Punk as he dives out from the high ground, flying right on top of Shu. With Shu and Happy getting knocked out and Sugar Free being able to find those picks to help him out. Great position here for the Titans to have the number advantage and as well as the reset that Punk is gonna be able to get from this Diva Bomb. It's a great reset to be able to have there. It actually forces out the rally here from Violet as well. And as you pressure Violet off of the point, it's actually a nice stagger to be able to get when you see the health pack being taken here. But the reinforcements from the oh. Outlaws are coming back. Punk could fly up there in that situation. Amazing here. We're currently see as another anti lays down to Aspire and Faith. Aspire gets taken out again. I love the communication coming in from the Outlaws. The bomb was used in that last fight. And the Outlaws, they gave an inch to the Titans there, but they are able to reclaim that point, setting them up to 80%. That's something that the Outlaws do so well, and even though you see Sugar Free coming back in with the EMP, the Outlaws are not giving up any space here. Where was the follow-up on that EMP? They're just yeah. able to do so much in terms of just being able to control the pace of these fights, and even though they give up a little bit of pressure on the point, they don't really care. They know that the game plan at the end of the day is more important to win out the team fights than give up a little percentage. A little desperate there with that EMP. The rest of the times are right behind Sugar Free, but they were making their way, allowing the rest of the Outlaws to outnumber them, clean them up without them being able to regroup as a full stack. And currently, the Outlaws are able to take map number one in a clean 2-0 fashion. Yeah, that was very dominant coming in there from the Outlaws. Maybe a little bit of a uh, misstep coming through at the very beginning of that round on Ruins, but at the end of the day, 
It's outlaws all the way, especially for this first map. Yeah, it was a really good look, looking at the positioning that we saw from Happy on the high ground. Yeah, you saw Crimzo toss out some of those anti-nades a few times from across the other side of that building, but it, it was so difficult to try to displace where the outlaws were already set up, especially with the progress that they already made on the point. As we take a look at the first round here, Happy doing basically the same thing on this first round. You see him getting set up to prevent the Titans from trying to get right back in away from their spawn. They did shut down the outlaws a few times. There's that moment that we saw the nano boost get put onto Violet to save him from the EMP, shutting down another dive opportunity away from the Titans game plan, working into that wing clone that they wanted to work for with the EMP. Unfortunately, Sugar we're gonna get that cooking in that second round either. That's gonna be it for Ilios Outlaws. Do take that first map, Necra. We're gonna be moving on to King's Row at the next site of this break. everybody the houston outlaws they win on ilios for our first map we're moving on to a map number two but they won in a very dominating fashion necra 
They really did. That was looking clean, like a well-oiled machine coming out there from the Houston Outlaws. And they really do have one of the best dives in the entire league right now. With Fearless leading the charge, we have no subs coming in. So I'm expecting to see a bit more of the same as we head into our next map of Kings Row. See how this is going to play out here. And it's going to work all into the cards of the Houston Outlaws if they, they continue on this domination because once again to highlight what's at stake here if they do win confirmed Houston will be going on to midseason madness and with the way that they're playing right now Necro that's definitely what it looks like uh, the Houston Outlaws are paving for themselves currently starting things off in Kings Row though this is going to be a map that allows a lot more verticality for Sugar Free to maybe get a hidden before changing off in the spawn room doors Aspire as well probably sticking over to this ash we're going to have to see here but Probably seeing as well Happy and Pelican looking like they're sticking to their guns here with Happy being on the Sombra. Yeah, this is actually kind of nice to see. You saw Happy play the Ash earlier on in Ilios. So you have a little bit more of those longer sight lines to be able to play around. But I think especially when you look at the flank routes that are available on a map like King's Row, I think you're really happy to be happy on Sombra. <laughs> it's just the perfect playground for him to be able to kind of run around and wreak havoc in the back line of the Titans. So you're going to see the defensive setup here of the Houston Outlaws to be with the double flux support, actually, of Shu on the Ana and Violet on the Zenyatta. But then that very classic dive-centric setup oh. here from the Outlaws. I like this choice, too, because we know what Zen does to D.Va. Basically destroys yes. D.Va, and this is what Punk <laughs> likes to excel in. But that also is a great oh. way to start things off. I was expecting maybe Sugar Free to make a swap at the very beginning. We did see him originally on Widow, but it was that Sugar Free swapping with, with Aspire, who sticks with the Tracer and gets that first pick that we just saw. Beautiful looks already coming in from the Titans. Outlaws playing off the high ground here. It's up to Punk to try to displace them. If he can maybe get some help. With Aspire, Crimson also wants to build into that Nana boost here to try to match that with Shu. Fearless falling low here as Punk is still going to be able to focus down on the back line of the Outlaws. Finding Shu, isolating him, leaving Fearless out with the heals that he desperately needed. With the Titans are already trying to speed run this payload outside of the garage. Well, you can absolutely capitalize on Sugar Free getting that pick early on onto Happy. Not only do you stop that ultimate charge from being generated there on the EMP, maybe try to get it a little bit out of sync so you can buy some time for Faith to get this rally online or even Crimson with the Nano in response. But you just have that player advantage. You may as well try to go for it here. So a great first point capture coming in from the Titans, but I'm expecting Outlaws to start to put up a really big fight here. Especially knowing that Violet can get set up here on the Zenyatta. Look at these beautiful straightaways for Violet to just kind of shoot those shots down. And those Discord orbs, they're going to start to hurt, that's for sure. See, I'm peppering in that extra damage onto Punk. Crimson's got that Nano boost, so it's going to be the difference maker here compared to Shu. Trying to get through this choke point could be tricky if the other team manages to come right back in. The Nano Boost is already activated here from Crimson onto Punk now. He gets hit with a big anti, and because of that, he's able to terrorize the back line, deleting them. Aspire gets the follow-up. That's three out for the Outlaws with another reset coming in, and the Titans unstoppable right now in this payload. Well, you love to have the Zenyatta next to the Ana because you know that Discord Orb has put a lot of pressure onto the front lines of the Titans as well as being able to really help <laughs> to try to amplify all the damage coming out from the Outlaws. But it's taking them a little bit of time to actually get set up here as the Titans continue working with the momentum that they've generated from capturing that first point so quickly. And when you're running a Zenyatta, you don't have a whole lot of mobility or individual staying power. So you're really relying on somebody like Fearless or Pelican to come back and peel for you if you do get dove upon. Uh, but Outlaws here, they got five ultimates to be able to try to defend the second objective with. And if they're able to get the defense here strong, then you're not too worried anymore about the Titans coming back in and trying to capture the second objective. Nano boost violent wow. while Fearless moved in with the primal activates the transcendence right through the dragons here. Talk about an expensive fight. Happy also unleashed the EMP. Faith caught into that. Punk goes for the reset inside of the Diva mech. Not getting the amount of trades though that they were maybe expecting here. Because look at Pelican's positioning right now. He's got the pulse bomb ready. You see the hack onto Punk. Is it even gonna try to blink to overextend here until he gets through that choke point and allows Fearless to help him out? Waited out enough time for Fearless to come right back in when he was the first pick initially before the rest of the Titans unleashed what they had in store. But they'll be able to try to re-engage now with the nano boost from Crimson. Yeah, the Crimson Nano Boost is actually really great here. Punk has to get back into this mech first, though. And if Houston Outlaws deny Punk's mech, that's big. Sugar Free also just goes down here, so 
That's a big player advantage for the Outlaws that they're absolutely going to work with. Yeah, with two down here, you're going to have three left alive from the Titans as they back away to the archway. Happy's right behind them. Didn't mind if Sugar Free found that first snipe at the very beginning from the floodgates. Saying that he made this swap right now, he's just going to be able to build up into a second EMP, as you can already see at 78%. He's going to back away here too, but they did what they had to do, which was hold back the Titans and cut off that momentum that they had built up. Well, that fight and that defensive hold from the Outlaws was really good for them. Not only did they end up getting all of the ultimates out of Titan's bank, sure, it was expensive on their part as well, being able to have to throw in so much, but Pelican held the front line, allowed Fearless to be able to come back into things. You noted that that sustainability really played a huge role in the Outlaws being able to actually stop this car progress, and it's going to pay off in dividends here. You're waiting at least to be able to cycle through this EMP from Happy. You've got the Transcendence in response here for Sugar Freeze EMP. But you're also buying so much time off the clock for Titans to get back into this one. Oh no, Violet founds the head off of Sugar Free's shoulders as Crimson's gonna meet him back in the spawn too. Two out for the Titans and Sugar Free was about to have that EMP to at least get some sort of advantage around that next corner. Meanwhile, the Outlaws, they had unleashed their own EMP and they're gonna have four other e oh, ults to work with here. Necro. They have a lot to work with in the bank. And at this point, too, I think if the outlaws are really going to try to keep in this defense and also maybe bring Titans down into sub one minute territory or even just stop them altogether from being able to capture the second objective, you're looking at Violet's transcendence. This is such a great answer to the EMP. So Titans would really love to be able to get that out of Violet's back pocket before pressing the EMP. And I'll ho really hope that they can take him out first. There's the EMP going in. Gonna be able to get that as Fearless is gonna get Nano boosted immediately to keep him up to par. Gonna activate the Primal on top of that, helping out that survivability. He does get hit with the Anti and Faith, tries to answer with the Rally. Playing a little spread apart is going to be the Outlaws trying to find them through these choke points. I like backing away in time here because while the rally is wasted with enough time, it's going to enable Pelican to get onto this backline, continuously pressing both Faith and Crimson misses out on the Pulse Bomb Stick. Not the delivery he was expecting here as a transcendence from Violet. It's going to allow the Outlaws to push forward here, try to stop Punk from setting up on the high ground. With less than 30 seconds now on the clock, Necro, the Titans, they have these two ults to work with. They use Crimson and that Nano Boost here onto Punk. He's going to be able to take a more forward position. They need to get this pick off to shoot, and they do so. Violet is the only support left, and now there's no sustainability left here for the Outlaws while Fearless is taking a nap. That's the pick that they were looking for to at least get this second checkpoint. Now, that second checkpoint, though, was basically captured in overtime, so you only have a minute and a half left if you're the Titans to try to get through that third and final point. Outlaws put up such a great showing there on the defense. Even Violet. Having the patience to be able to hold on to the Transcendence, not use it knowing that she was able to keep Fearless up through the sugar-free EMP and could come in with the Transcendence later, it almost paid off for Outlaws to be able to stop the cart in its tracks, but Tite was able to overwhelm here. And the EMP on top, very big. Oh, huge. And they were able to capitalize off of it too with the initial damage with Crimson tossing out that Bionade hitting Violet, both supports out from the Outlaws again. The priority is there for the Titans. With less than a minute on the clock for them to take advantage of. Spire's moving up. He's got the Pulse Bomb in hand. They're trying to hug the spawn room doors, but they got to move this payload along the way. Still now, less than 50 seconds, and Aspire has that Pulse Bomb ready. Crimson's nearing that Nano Boost with Faith having that rally. Oh, the EMP. Oh, huge here. Finds onto three, and it's going to cost Faith his life. Crimson's trying to hide in, out of sight from Happy, but he can't get away. Both supports out, and they have less than 30 seconds to regroup here. No staggering allowed for the Titans. The fact that you're able to get the EMP online, you're able to pepper it on top of the backline of the Titans, it does stem the bleeding a little bit as Houston Outlaws try to stop this cart from being able to get to that third objective. They still have a lot of sustain to work with when you have the Fearless Primal Rage as well as the Shu Nano Boost online. But Titans, they, they've got to be able to get back to the cart. They're not allowed to get there. Fearless is oh. holding the door. Someone's right there, they're over time to get away and Aspire finds that first pick onto Happy. That's gonna be big to initiate the Titans and enable them to get into position. Punk flies in, he's got the Diva Bomb so he can go in for the reset. He doesn't even need it just yet because the Nano Boost is put onto him. Faith as well with the Rally. They're gonna try to chase down Violet out there. They already took out Shu. Violet used up the Transcendent to try to get away in time. And now the Titans are gonna be hugging the spawn room doors. They're not gonna let anybody come out. No Happy, no Violet. Punk is angry as overtime is still taking away. Fearless gets 
Tay with a huge anti. He already used up the primal. Pelican is trying to zoom out of the doors. He's got the pulse bomb ready, but he doesn't have the survivability. Just when the time is up, the Titans get the payload to the finish line. Payload is at the finish line in overtime. So the Houston Outlaws win condition now is to be able to get the payload over the finish line of these three points with over a minute remaining. But the fact that the Titans finished the map does put them in a position where they could tie up the series. This might be the map that the desk was looking at to be able to mm. take a map off of the Houston Outlaws for this match. Honestly, I really like the end changes that we saw from the Titans at the very end right there too. Enabling Punk was huge, but it was also that first pick from Aspire. I believe it was onto Happy at the very yep. end right there too. Nice. So they already were playing with a number advantage and then they did what they had done in the previous two fights prior to that final one, where they were able to focus on the back line of Shu and Violet. Again, yes, Violet had the transcendence, but they didn't really let Violet get set up in putting in the damage that he usually puts in on the Zen. So they, that priority focus was great coming in from the Titans, but we got to see it running again. I think something that the Titans could really use to their advantage is that Punk's D.Va is excellent. This is one of oh, Punk's yeah. best heroes. Yeah. And to be able to bring it out here on a dive, you don't have to play the Winston versus Winston game, which is something that the Titans could use to their advantage. I, I, you saw the mirror match and how that went earlier on for our first map of Illumines. No. Didn't go the way the Titans would have wanted it to. It was a very dominant performance here from the Outlaws, and I think the Titans have recognized, especially on a map like King's Row, where you can run the D.Va, you do it. You do it, and you you really like try to play to that strength. And they knew what the issue would have been if Punk was focused down on the D.Va, which would have been Violet in this case, as Punk dives in and runs over Pelican. Highlight how the how the D.Va has really been that one pawn that has helped out the Titans here on King's Row, and you can see it playing out again on this defense. Pelican sticking to the Echo here. Well, this is another point that I brought up earlier on, is that something that the Titans could take advantage of is an off-meta pick like the Echo coming out from Pelican. If you're able to continue to focus that down, then you are able to try to get some damage onto the board here, but... When you've got a main tank like Fearless creating so much space, Pelican has so much room to operate in. Yeah, and it also makes sense for this first point, too. You know that the Titans are going to get set up on the high ground here, and Pelican's going to be able to follow up with Fearless so easily. They already got that first tick, as Happy's going to be able to finish off what was left with Punk, so he got demeked. And it's going to be Titans backing away from this, letting the Outlaws get the payload out of the garage. Even if Titans are going to play to a strength like the D.Va, maybe like trying to focus down Pelican's Echo, you still see Pelican switching off of the Sombra, and... It's also still a tall ask. The Houston Outlaws are still very, very good at being able to play this dive. And especially when you look at it from an offensive angle, Houston Outlaws are able to really push with this momentum. And so you're going to see Fearless try to pressure up into the Titans front line really strongly here. Look at that. A great bubble placement here too, to be able to try to eat through some of that damage. Crimson did dance around the edge of that barrier, too, to send out the anti. It does force Fearless to back off for now. It's the consistency of harassing the back line after that nano boost gets put onto Punk. They're going to delay that extra time, putting him to sleep. Great positioning from Shu. They're just going to force Punk to stay by this choke point here. You can see the ping getting put onto Shu as he's about to get the nano boost as well. Violet already has the rally online, and Fearless is going to have the primal. Good amount of ultimates for both of these teams to work with, but Crimson did use that nano boost to initiate this fight here. Holding on to that choke point, it's going to be Sugar Free, waiting to get into position with the EMP, looking to unleash it as he finds two onto Happy and Violet. That was right after the rally was set off. Shu has a nano boost, and Crimson now gets taken out by Pelican and the Pulse Bomb, already having the number advantage here after Punk and Crimson are out of this fight. Aspire literally low one pixel away after Pelican finishes him off, and they're going to have the extra space around that next corner to work with. Big aggressive plays coming out there. Violet is even recognized. You don't even need to be able to save the rally for the EMP if you're just able to kite around a lot of that damage. We've seen so many examples of outlaws being able to wait through a little bit a couple of those tools, you know, when Crimson laid the nano boost onto Punk, you saw the sleep and the immediate back off there of the Outlaws, and to be able to use the rally a little bit more aggressively, kind of puts the Titans on the back foot. Oh, forced out the reset. It's gonna be Pelican, who's been putting in so much damage so far. 
See Shu in the off angle. Happy finding a spire. Well, he was trying to get into position. Trying to also put in some of the extra damage onto Punk, who's forced to back away now that they're playing at a number disadvantage. Faith, though, with the rally, is going to set up the Titans while his fire is going to go to blink right back to the safety of his team. Again, at the spot room door, Sugar Free can't save the same, though, as Fearless is going to be able to find him. So, that nano boost that was put on earlier, the Outlaws. Happy still holding onto the Dragons, and he's going to be able to displace the whole team. That's going to D mech Punk, and he won't be able to get back as he's going to fall into the line of sight of Violet. They're going to be able to get that second checkpoint now a lot easier. And they've been on that momentum run Necro since they got the payload out of the garage doors. Yeah, this has been really easy fights for them to take here. They haven't met, been met with too much resistance. And when you're looking at the Outlaws wanting to try to finish this series with a clean 3-0, try to secure their spot at the midseason and completely bypass the knockout rounds, you need a minute. You need over a minute in the time bank right here to be able to have another chance at winning this map and also deny the titans from getting a chance at being able to get another attack as well the nano boost got all primzo is online though maybe this is going to be the line in the sand yeah they got all that time in the time bank the nano boost was ready to go and pelican was also ready to unleash that pulse bomb here primzo out but he's again Try to send out that nano boost. Was it going to work out and get the credit that the Titans desperately needed from that play? Faith also going out the back line, getting torn apart by the Outlaws. You highlighted Fearless, and it's for a reason as the EMP comes out from Sugar Free. You are still playing at that number disadvantage. Can they turn things around with Pelican still alive? Yes, Crimson finds that pick onto Happy, but Fearless had that time already. The EMP was used up, and nobody was left here to defend the point as the Outlaws finish it with a good amount of time. That's a lot of time in the bank. That's almost three minutes that the Outlaws now have to work with going into this final extra round. Titans don't get an opportunity here. It's just on the Outlaws right now to be able to work with this extra time that they have in the bank, this extra round. They only need a third of that first objective to win this map. Vicky, they're on a tear right now. And with how aggressive their dive has been, so clean. The combo between Pelican and Fearless has just been mwah, chef's kiss out here. Yeah. Pelican, 18 elims, eight final blows with over 11.2k damage. Compare that to the interesting timing of Sugar Free with these EMPs, but when you're on that last leg and you're trying to defend the point there and you have these numbers falling from your team, it could be one of those desperate last Hail Marys out here that we've seen so far from Sugar Free. A few times now, actually, within this map, but Getting set up already on the defense is going to be the Titans. Again, no time in the time bank for them to work with. Meanwhile, the Houston Outlaws have two minutes and 57 seconds to work with here. That's two ultimate cycles. That's two full ultimate cycles that Houston Outlaws have to work with. So even if they don't get the point right away, they have the ability to work up to ults. And if they are able to get ahead of the Titans, that should be an easy capture for them. They may even just be able to win this on all-out mechanical scale. <laughs> You heard Kenobi talk about it. These are players that are at the top of their game across the board. And when you put them on heroes that they're really well known for, it's a recipe for success. See Happy on the high ground here. Gonna be able to take that angle. Also pinging towards the right side. Pelican gets hit with a huge anti from Crimzo. He's been pretty on point with these antis. They do have Shu tossing out the anti to get that revenge right back onto him. Playing from the back here, it's gonna be Punk dropping down from the high ground. See Happy still in this angle, unchecked by the way. So much split attention going in, and he still finds Crimzo off to the right side in that side room, trying to give us the support over to Punk. Now this just leaves Faith to help sustain the rest of the Titans, and he just gets hit with an anti from Shu. Violet doesn't be able to get resustained before Aspire has now been able to blink into his face, find that melee plague. Happy's still unchecked here, right behind Fearless. Numbers trickling in with the Houston Outlaw spawn room doors right behind their backs. They get another pick. It's Happy who's found the head now onto Sugar Free. Nobody left from the Titans. They needed to stay on that point. They don't hold back the Houston Outlaws, and they take another map. Houston Outlaws are just looking like an unstoppable force right now, really riding the wind in their sails coming in from their win versus the Florida Mayhem yesterday. That's a rush. That is a wild feeling to be able to have, especially after such a hard-fought match. And you can really see the confidence that the Outlaws have approaching this one today. Yeah, and it goes down to how strong they were already on the attack, especially for that first point with the way that Pelican's on the Echo, going to be able to dive in with Fearless. And then since everybody from the Titans is trying to focus on helping 
to peel for the back line. No one's going to check Happy. It would have been Aspire. Sugar Free was trying to find uh, just the opportunity to help out Punk. While you saw Fearless taking the head realm and just making sure that like, he couldn't try to stave off of the, the, the back line of theirs. But it's so difficult here to deal with. And you're literally, your attention is split in two different angles, Necro. You got the high ground to focus on, then you got that side room where you think you're safe. Rialto is our map number three with the Houston Outlaws sitting at match point. You don't want to miss it because this is our final series of the day. Welcome back, everyone. We got the Houston Outlaws sitting at match point. Are they going to be the Titan Slayers as we get to see the subs coming in, Necro? 
We've got one sub coming in here for the Houston Outlaws. Gargoyle now being subbed into the roster over Fearless. And as we got a chance to see a little glimpse of on Rialto in our previous series, this is a map that you can absolutely run the Diva and the Ramatra, two heroes that Gargoyle is very good at. Diva specifically is a very standout hero for this player. Yeah, I'm definitely saying that Diva trade off between Gargoyle and Punk. We're here, we're living for it. But we also know that that Gargoyle ramp do be going crazy, all right? So we gotta <laughs> see how that, that's gonna go down. We'll see, we'll see. Which, <laughs> which win. But I am expecting the deal, of course, gonna be able to get on top of that high ground, very similarly to what we had seen from Punk in that previous map on King's Row. That's kind of what they were banking on too, but the Houston Outlaws basically sped ran their way to the finish line on that payload. Now getting things started here, it's gonna be the Vancouver Titans on the defense this time around. Yep, and we're gonna see a very similar look to them as we've seen coming in from King's Row. You're gonna got the Sombra, the, the Diva. Uh, very interesting here, actually, that Sugar Free actually not picking up the Tracer this time around uh, over Aspire. Actually, uh, yeah, that, that's that's interesting. Sugar Free played the Sombra on King's Row, and Aspire played the Tracer, but now this time around, it looks like uh, Sugar Free is gonna be playing the Tracer, which is different for this series so far. <laughs> Just gotta get a little check in right there. Landed that shot onto Shu, and all right. Also got that anti onto Pelican. He's gonna be restabilized just as quick. Let me point to that out though too. I, I recall Sugar Free back in the Contender stage just being an insanely cracked tracer, but they have been finding Sugar Free on that Sombra. Looking at how the meta has shifted in that direction, even last week there too, we saw the changes to how the Titans is approaching this meta here. Pelican sticking to the Echo, also no surprise as Rialto also provides that verticality that he could just rely on, just back away just in case. Hopefully Punk doesn't chase after him, especially when he's asleep like that. Good sleep dart from Shu here. Pelican falling incredibly low, nobody to save him though, and Crimson shuts him down from the air. It's gonna be a soft reset here for the Outlaws as they do have to wait for Pelican to be back online. But I think more importantly, what the Outlaws are looking for is either a big pick onto the Titans, or to wait for Shu to be able to build up to this nano boost. Gargoyle also actually starting to rack up that ultimate charge very quickly there onto the D.Va, keeping up with Punk. And you could definitely see this playing a big role as well when you see the nano boost coming up for Shu. Maybe you give that over to Gargoyle, get some amplified damage, as well as get that mech online. Uh, 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 we Watch see out. where you're shooting from. Pelican uh, is uh. ready. <laughs> oh, man. You saw how quick Aspire was out of there. It says, that is none of my business. That's going to be your <laughs> stairs, Pelican. No problem there. He's able to regroup with the rest of Titus just as quickly, but diving on Aspire is Gargoyle. And you talk about the Nana boost from Shu. He's able to get that so quickly. Crimson's going to match that immediately onto Punk. It's the mecha battle for the centuries out here as Gargo is going to be healed up up to date and Happy's going to be able to get the follow up with the pulse bomb oh. stick onto Crimzo. Yes, you pop the rally. Is it going to be enough here from Faith? It looks like it is to at least keep the Titans in this side room. Gargoyle's got that Diva bomb so that way he can go for the reset, but so does Punk. He's going to be able to pull a trigger on it on the high ground here, allowing the rest of the outlaws to just jump down from below, push this payload over. Finally, Punk does manage to drop down and it has a stalled enough time for the rest of the Titans to regroup with him, but he's incredibly low, does get healed up. Sugar Free, though, gets wiped out by Happy thanks to Shu. It's a big pick there, and it's gonna be enough for the Houston Outlaws to be able to get this car over the line and also start to make some progress on the second objective. That's four minutes on the clock here to be able to make it through this next phase of Rialto. And when you were able to just use the Nano Boost earlier on, Allies are coming into this one with a big plate of ultimates. You've got the pulse bomb. I mean, the duplicate as well, on top of the fact that Gargoyle actually held on to the Diva Bomb ult. That's so much to stay in here. That's so much that the Houston Outlaws have to work with now, being able to contend with basically nothing here for the Titans. Titans have nothing. Uh -uh. <laughs> you got the duplicate here, and he got immediately oh. booted out of that. That's Even didn't get the Diva Bomb ready. Yeah, that, that's completely deleted. Remax here, nobody from Titans was right there to be in that line of sight here. I like it's still in that duplicate, by the way, here. Gonna be able to try to get back in before the duplicate runs out, as he's gonna be able to back away with the Echo. Happy having that Pulse Bomb ready. Violet with the Rally as well. She was about to get another Nano Boost, by the way. Crimson gets deleted after getting hit with a huge anti. The fault comes in. Gargoyle gonna be able to claim that. 
Aspire made the swap over to the Ash once we got to the second checkpoint. You have more of his open sight lines, and he was able to find Happy and Pelican, and with a Dynamite find Violet here too, so the Outlaws playing at that number disadvantage, which allows things to slow down and allows the Vancouver Titans to not get into the re repositioning stage. Ooh, okay, Punk, oh, you gotta be really careful there. If you don't get the pick on the shoe, that ends up being a oh, very big stagger if Punk ends up getting out of mech there, so really nice awareness from the titans to know that they can actually go after those picks and the outlaws here uh we while we did see the switch from the ash from aspire as you called out pelican's actually making a switch here as well trying to get the sombra up and online and this is where i start to have some questions about sugar free actually switching over to the tracer not that he hasn't been popping off but is aspire confident nice. enough in playing the sombra if you really want to try to switch over to that Gotta see how that plays out here, because this, again, is gonna work into the Spire's plan. Punk getting that pick onto Happy. They gotta stop the payload from getting any sort of progress. It, it's gotta make sure that nobody tries to go for a sneaky back cap here, especially with the way that Titans is set up on the high ground. Bob at the ready from the Spire. They find Violet. Gargo is gonna go down next. It's another team fight win, but this is what I'm no. talking about. Pelican, <laughs> he's gonna keep doing it. He's gonna keep doing it. Why not, right? Because they're staring down the open sidelines to help enable Aspire. You see Punk getting these picks, so why wouldn't Happy or Pelican try? Listen, rather, Pelican have tried to move in there. <laughs> as long as Pelican doesn't fall into the water, okay? Like, I, just be wary oh, of no. the boat, okay? <laughs> Please be wary of the gondola positioning. <laughs> if you're gonna be sneaky like that. Oh, funny. Ooh, you can take a moment to breathe here. Same can't be said about the times as the Nana Boost was put onto the Gargoyle, but Sugar Free finding a huge post bomb pick onto Shu with Aspire getting the follow-up hitting Violet. No backline left for the Outlaws, no sustainability. It's gonna have to be another reset here for the Outlaws with almost less than a minute on the clock. Okay, maybe this was the secret sauce. I don't want to speak too soon here, but the fact that Sugar Free has been able to hold the line with the, the Tracer, really having these pop-off moments there with those pulse bombs, being able to get those big picks, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Happy. This is definitely a look for the Titans that you like to see, but you still have to be careful because the Outlaws have an EMP in their back pocket. Oh, and Pelican's been hanging out behind them this whole time, Necro. Like you said, the EMP and gets into position. And the follow-up after the initial damage on the EMP claims both Aspire and Crimzo. That means the Bob can't be used, then neither can the Nano Boost. Faith tried to pop what looks like the beginning of the rally here. He also gets hacked right in the middle of it. See the shield bash coming in. The respect as less than 30 seconds on the clock is left for the Outlaws to get to the second checkpoint. They just deem at Gargoyle. It's going to have to be a reset for him back in the spawn room doors. And Punk has been on top of getting this D.Va check onto Gargoyle. Gargoyle. It's been very clean coming out here from the Titans, and they have to be able to keep holding the line here, even though the EMP was able to get so many members. Outlaw is not able to follow up on that, and now you're looking at a position where Titans, Punk can just move forward here, has the Diva Mech at the ready to be able to pop that, to be able to get that reset, and Sugar Free as well. Let's see if you can get another pop off moment here. Overtime taking away, Happy Force is the overtime. Shu goes down first here! Gargoyle gets the reset, but the Bob also cleans up the backline of the Outlaws. The sustainability isn't there, and Aspire, being on this Ash, has allowed them to triumph and end overtime. Gone for the Outlaws. Titans successfully hold them off right before that second checkpoint, Necra. Okay, big defense there coming out from the Titans. Still, the, you know, the Titans now know where they, they're going to have to be able to push that cart, but we've seen what the Outlaws can do. Uh, when it comes down to being able to, to hold the Titans back, but the, the offense kind of didn't work out the way that we would have expected it to, as we saw from King's Row. Uh, that leaves some questions of whether or not the, tight, uh, the Outlaws can actually get the defense done here. See, I like the changes that we're seeing from the Titans. Spire being on the Ash. I mean, on Rialto, you could get that done with the open sight lines. But like these changes that we've seen, Gonna take a look at Aspire getting the 3k. Because again, him making the swap over, we just didn't see him on the Widow at the very beginning here. Nobody was there to check him. And at the very end here, was able to find Happy. Was able to then find Pelican, the rally putting him in that perfect position. Gets that follow from Sugar Free. And then the dynamite Ooh. was the nail in the coffin. He cleared up this entire point, but also the rest of the Titans were also to be coordinated to move right back with him and then to re-engage with that rally was huge from Faith. Ah, I mean, this Boom. is not the first... Oh my goodness, that's disgusting. 
Like this is not the first time that we've actually seen Aspire and Sugar Free switch the roles here of who plays the Tracer. If you were expecting to run the Sombra at all, I think that Sugar Free is definitely the player that has the most confidence with running that hero. But Aspire seems to be looking just fine, being able to play this Ash from high ground. And if you're able to take control of that, then yeah, Ash is able to do a lot of work here with the angles that the dynamite can actually reach and this will get better access to Pelican. Wow, look at that! Wow, I love it. I love it. Also clearing up that space on the balcony high ground. You know exactly where Fusen is going to be. Especially looking at what they're running here. Pelican still sticking to the echo on that first point, so that way he could go from back and forth from the high to low ground here. They're trying to sneak their way over by the staircase, forcing the outlaws off this high ground, and they've successfully have done so. See them dropping down, trying to get to the health pack. Punk gets put to sleep in the process, and Faith loses out on his life here from Aspire, who still continuously has been able to click heads onto Happy here too. Faith losing out from Happy originally, and that was the revenge that they were able to claim. Gargoyle. We get demacked here while Punk is going to be able to reset on the high ground, but it's going to be the Outlaws having to give the Titans the space, Necro. And then Gargoyle coming out of spawn is going to have to use the boosters to be able to get back to the front line to get this next defense in. Chu is, has to work up to this nano boost here. This is going to be the big saving grace here for the Outlaws defense, especially if you can give that over to Gargoyle right away, or even Violet, honestly, if you really want to make sure that your front line can hold strong. See, nano boost up to Gargoyle here. Gonna be a hold forward, tries to harass Crimzo Faith right next to him here. Punk is trying to help heal. Backing away just in time as he's about to get the Diva Bomb ready. Or got hit with a huge anti from Crimzo, but the save could be said both onto Faith and to Sugar Free is that anti from Shu. Punk going in for the reset on the Diva Bomb, and so is Gargoyle. Sugar Free backing away in time, has the Pulse Bomb ready. The rally called in from both sides as Punk is taking a quick nap, but he's on that point. He's going to be able to stay contested on top of it, but it's about clearing the Outlaws away from this. They are stalling for as long as possible, Necra, as Gargoyle finally gets demeked, and the Bob from Aspire adds another member from the Titans here on board. The duplicate from Pelican, he gets demeked. He's trying to get right back into it. He gets right in as happy to be able to find Aspire at the process, but the Bob also on the field for as long as it has been has been able to put in all the extra damage while aspire is absent after getting taken out both well, faith we're seeing some trades coming in but the number advantage is in favor for the titus as punk buys in this extra space to hold back the outlaws to get that first checkpoint and now they also have four minutes in their time bank to be able to make it to basically the second checkpoint here. Vancouver Titans, they're really starting to liven up. It feels like being able to play around the strengths of Aspire, playing these more long-range hitscan heroes, as well as Punk playing the D.Va, has really been doing them some favors here. But the job isn't done yet. Pelican has switched off of the Echo after using the Duplicate, is onto the Sombra, and this is going to have to be a Hail Mary here from the Outlaws to be able to keep holding strong. They can't lose another fight here that would be devastating for them and they want this 3-0 and they want this victory to move on to the midseason and i want to stay on this high ground here too you can see sugar free trying to blink to try to put in some of that extra pressure finding pelican over on the other side while punk tries to help dive with him he did get hacked originally when trying to fight pelican as happy sends out the pulse bomb and it hits faith faith out of this while he could have gotten that rally for this fight so many ultimates for both Titans and the Outlaws with the backline to work with here for this next engagement. But Punk isn't letting loose just yet. He's staying here. He's going to be able to put in some of the extra pressure before backing away with the rest of the team. Yeah, Gargoyle knows to not overextend there. That's exactly how you get yourself into a bad situation. And Shu may not have a line of sight on you to be able to give you that nano boost as you might want to be able to keep that alive. Oh. But Punk here actually got hacked. So some big intel going over to Pelican to know that there are some ultimates on board here for the Titans for sure. Goodness, Crimson with these antis are always insane. The Nana Boost comes in onto Faith, and you just send Faith out to the front line, setting up that Pokemon as he's going to be able to swing away with the Flail. Pulse Bomb onto Shoe from Sugar Free. With that rally, though, he's going to be able to keep the rest of the Titans alive while they're nearing that golden box of victory right in front of them. Shu getting taken out without the Nano Boost activated yet, and a nice huge anti. The EMP even bigger, though, onto Punk, onto Crimson, and Aspire. Diva Bomb activated from Gargoyle. No follow-ups from this initial damage from the EMP. Punk is still alive, and he is able to resustain. If Aspire stays alive, that would have been huge because he would have had the bomb, but Happy doesn't let that happen. The Titans are backing away while Happy's just trying to mark down the back line, but they don't want to give up too much because they still have less than two minutes to work with. That's still a lot of time for the Titans to be able to get back into this one and still be able to reach that box of victory. But hey, the Outlaws, that was a scrappy fight. They had to throw everything in the kitchen sink at that one to be able to hold down the, the back line. And 
Now you're gonna see another rotation of ultimates from them. Shu has the nano boost online. You're looking at a pretty raw fight here though on both sides. Here comes the Bob that Aspire was holding on to from that previous fight. Crimson gets hit with a huge anti. Pelican gets a follow-up here, sending out the nano boost as well as gonna be Shu. Pelican take, taking advantage of that while Violet has that nano boost on top of him. See the shield bash also coming in from Faith. Huge shield here to work with, but so does Violet playing off this next corner. Now less than a minute on the clock for the Titans to get that payload to the finish line. Look how close it is, but they need to regroup now. They have Sugar Free and Punk with their ults ready to clear some space. Yeah, and Violet as well, just making sure that there's no sneaky back cap that can come through, being able to make sure that that card stays contested. But Pelican is looking for the CMP, knows that this could be the nail in the coffin here for the Vancouver Titans' chances of being able to get back into this series. Oh, this seems to be huge here in the capital A. The dive immediately right afterwards. It's found sugar free after Pelican unleashes the EMP. Punk trying to get away. He gets demected. and he's going to go for the reset with the Diva Bomb. Faith also trying to help out Crimson as Punk is going to be able to get right back into the mech. But that's a Diva Bomb moving in right into the backline of the Titans. Happy. His Pulse Bomb gets eaten up by Punk immediately after he repositions. Less than 30 seconds on the clock, and the Houston's are put the Houston is putting in so much pressure in this choke point right Right now, Crimson getting that pick onto Pelican is going to be big and negates the damage coming in from the Outlaws. And now the Titans are going to be able to move all the way up. Less than 30 seconds, less than 10 seconds now in time. Happy, gonna be able to move in. Punk with the nano boost is gonna be able to hold forward, trying to isolate Shu. He gets hacked. The rally comes in from Faith and Violet. Overtime now activated. Violet is trying to back away after he gets hit with an anti, but he can't with the sandwich that Titans have put around the Outlaws. They're looking to put this payload in the bag after clearing up the point from the Outlaws. Happy trying to stay alive for as long as possible. And is, is it going to be enough? The Titans, they take Rialto. Titans finally getting a map on the board. They looked good on that particular map. They were able to get through some of these scrappy fights to be able to find themselves in a map four scenario. We're looking at a, a much better look for the Titans here in this series. They seem to have been able to crack the code, being able to play Aspire on the Ash Punk. Again, leaning into his proficiency on the D.Va and also recognizing that Shu and Violet are problems. Uh, he's going to have to do something about making sure that they can kind of keep alive, but Titans know that they got to take him out. Yeah, and also trying to match that, trying to find Gargoyle and to check him here too. Gargoyle put in a lot of damage, but Punk was able to follow up more often with Aspire and Sugar Free. He had 20 Elims compared to that of Gargoyle Ooh. with only 9 Elims. And that's a big difference if you take a look at the changes that we had seen coming in from the Owls when they had Gargoyle move in. We saw this play from Sugar Free at the very end here too. They take Rialto, but still, the Houston Outlaws are sitting at match point, Necra. Can they finish everything off here on Esperanza? We're gonna have to say on the other side of this break.
Welcome back, everybody. The Titans squeeze a win against the Houston Outlaws while they still sit at match point Necra, but it was difficult. That was not easy. They were breaking a sweat down to the wire at the very end there. Now, I felt like everybody was going absolutely ham in that server, just trying to be able to claw their way through that. Titans just trying to put up that scrappy fight. Outlaws playing their absolute hardest, trying to close out the series there, and it was overtime. Titans were in overtime to be able to capture that point, but they still got it done. They're still not out of this yet. No, not yet. And we have to highlight one player in particular. We talked about him right before we toss it to the break, and it's got to be talked True. about again. It's going to be Punk, especially after that last match. To compare what we had seen between Punk and Gargoyle, you could see he got five final blows, 20 elims. In comparison to what we had seen from Gargoyle, I think he only had nine elims and four final blows. Yes, he put in more damage by like 1k extra, I guess, here in comparison to Punk, but it was the follow ups from Punk that worked into the team composition that they were running out on Rialto, which really enabled the Spire specifically, actually. We highlighted the Ash for a reason because you have these open sight lines on Rialto to allow the Spire to get these cheeky picks, which he was constantly getting when it came to harassing both Shu and Violet. Yeah, it's been really awesome to be able to see Aspire's impact in this particular match. You ended up seeing like that, that, that swap of roles, right? You know, having Aspire play the Tracer early on, Sugar Free on the Sombra, and then you end up switching it back so that you have Aspire able to play these more long range hit scan heroes. Love to see it. I feel like that worked out great for the Titans and hope they're able to lean into that again. But I feel like on Esperanza, our next map might be a little bit harder. Yeah, and also looking back at the highlight from Punk earlier on, the follows that we've been seeing between Punk, Sugar Free, and Aspire, especially from the Dynamite in Rialto that we had also seen, has really been on point. Punk's reaction was definitely there. It was one point that he had to reposition himself back onto the high ground right before that second checkpoint, and then immediately turned around and ate a pulse bomb from Happy. So he is definitely calling out these ult charges there too for the rest of his team, and we have to see this continue going if we want to see an even series on our hands, Necra. If we want to see this tie two to two piece then the Titans need to bring out that same type of sauce going into Esperanza. Absolutely. It's still going to be tough to pull off there. I think that when you look at a map like Esperanza, you definitely look at the Titans and even the Outlaws kind of going back to basics. That's actually why we're going to see Fearless swap back into the roster here for the Houston Outlaws. I'm expecting to see the Sombra Tracer dive come out from both teams here. Aspire may have a little bit of a harder time being able to weave in something like the Hanzo or the Ash, especially when you have to be able to play around some of the verticality that Esperanza offers. Um, but maybe we get a chance to see Punk stick to the D.Va here. Uh, it's a flavor of this Sombra Tracer dive we don't typically get a chance to see out of most of our teams that play it. It's like how when we see Fearless in the roster, it's going to play Winston. But mm -hmm. that's, again, a difference maker that maybe might work here for the Titans is Punk Steva. Yeah, Punk Steva. Punk obviously known for that Diva there too. He's stuck with it for the last few maps already here. Get set up for our potential last map if the Houston Outlaws are looking to try to finish this off right here. Fearless now moving in like you mentioned, Necra. They're in here. They're, they were tired of it. They saw what Gargoyle was trying to do, trying to match the D.Va against the D.Va himself. It's going to be Punk. Didn't work out for them this time around. They don't want to fool around. But just getting set up, and can you enlighten this Necra going into Esperanza, how this is going to enable Fearless now, of course, since we know him for that Winston. Winston is able to play around so much of the high ground, especially when you look at that, maybe that first bridge as you look in the neutral and you start to extend towards that first checkpoint. That's really where you're gonna start to see that Winston start to posture for position here. You also don't necessarily have to play the Winston here. We've seen a lot of other teams come out with a Ramatra Brawl. So that's another look that we may end up seeing here on Esperanza. Just depends on what you expect the enemy team to do. And that's really where I feel like you can end up seeing a lot of changes come in for these team compositions is yeah it's map dependent and it's also opponent dependent what do you expect them to come out with trying to see what we're gonna have here well just getting started it's been a banger of matches all day today it really absolutely has. love it yeah and it's it's honestly has thrown me for a roller coaster ride with my pickums i'm not gonna lie but this <laughs> is what i live for some good overwatch out here 
especially to make up for the last series. You know, I gotta say it how it is going into yeah, this fourth and final match of the day. <laughs> for more there, like I, you know, I, I go easy on the shock a little bit because I feel like this is a team that you really do expect to see a lot more out of. But maybe they're able to bring us a little bit more coming into the rest of the season. But right now, it's all about the Titans versus the Outlaws here. You're gonna see the symmetric teleporter out of spawn for both Pelican and Aspire as they end up swapping back over to the Tracers. But it's all about the neutral game here, Vicky. Who's gonna be able to get this high ground? You can see the Winston's actually on the high ground on opposite sides. And this is what we're expecting too, rolling onto Esperanza, Fearless, and Punk going to be moving onto the Winston. We know that Diva could easily get onto the high ground here too, but the Winston just providing so much more with this composition here. Shu getting hacked by Sugar Free. Also the race to these EMPs for that win con, and that's gonna put a dent to that EMP charge with Faith getting Woo! that first pick onto Happy. Love to see it if you're the Titans right now, especially with Faith holding that position on the other side, now allowing the rest of the Titans to get some extra progress on this bot. Uh, this is kind of what like the Titans have really shown us is that yeah they have to be able to play around happy when a like a gray sombra but you can see the thought the reaction times coming out here from the Titans you called out the pulse bomb eats from Punk Aspire as well I, I mean Faith even just like keeping their head on a swivel to be able to get happy sombra out of the equation it's been great to be able to see this kind of reaction time come out here from the Titans. So the dive attempt coming in from Punk, he's incredibly low as Pelican is trying to nail him down. He sauces out the pulse bomb just for extra measures, you know, finding Ghost out here after Punk already went down earlier. Going back and forth with this bot like a tug of war battle. See the Nata Boost coming in from both sides between Shu and Crimson, but Shu gets nailed down by Aspire as the Nata Boost was put onto him. As Fearless is staying up and alive after he had the Nata Boost for a little bit, but the moment it runs out, look how low he falls. The EMP deleting so not just early. that barrier, but deleted him early. Yeah, you talk about the buildup for this EMP, and you can see the difference between Sugar Free, who just had it, and then Happy here, who had died first. No, oh, but this is why we see that roll swap come in. Sugar Free is so good at the Sombra. This is actually a player that I feel like has been kind of underrated when it comes down to having to contend with the likes of Lip Sombra from the Atlanta Rain. But Sugar Free, you can't count the Titans out of this fight, especially knowing how fast Sugar Free has been working up to these EMPs. I think that caught the Outlaws off guard. We're not expecting that the rush coming in from Violent, he gets shut down right afterwards while, after putting the Outlaws into that position up front. They are finding some of these trades as Faith is going to be able to find Happy. He's trying to get away, trying to force Fearless to back away. He's got that Primal, he flows him right out of his line of sight. He's literally one, he's like, help me here. <laughs> Tries to send them right back, but thankfully there's that mega health pack that is already hacked for him. He's gonna be able to restabilize, get right back into this fight. Still contested, both these teams going back and forth while Pelican sends out that Pulse Bomb. This doesn't get the outcome that he was looking for right here too, but it's just a force punk back, but he had that Primal activated here and he's just gonna wait for the rest of the Titans to re-engage. He juggled everybody away. They got the checkpoint. Titans have actually unlocked that first checkpoint here and the Outlaws are playing on the back foot. The EMP has to come. Oh my goodness. The EMP finding four here claims Crimson. It's about to claim Faith here too. And the Outlaws were able to reset right after that. But like you said, Necro, they still were able to get to that checkpoint here. And now the Outlaws have a lot to work with since 54 meters have already been built up for the Titans. Yeah, that's a pretty big lead coming out here from the Titans. You love being able to get that first checkpoint as well. I feel like that's going to be something that's going to be nice for the Vancouver Titans staff to play around later to be able to keep the lead. But the Outlaws here are looking at having to win two fights and without ultimates to spare. Crimso, not up to that nano boost yet, but that's really gonna be one of the first ultimates coming online in this fight, unless Shu is able to beat him to the punch and give that nano boost over to Fearless. See, so yes, Punk is gonna be able to leap away to the safety of his team after seeing that Faith and Crimso got hit with a big anti from Shu. Holding on to that nano boost while Fearless does get hacked by Sugar Free, who, by the way, has another EMP at the ready for this fight. Nana Boost allowing Fearless to move forward, but the immediate disengage from the Titans, while Punk is going to be, all, be able to help heal for both Faith and Crimson, is huge here. He unleashes the EMP right as Sugar Free falls low, tries to back away in time, still was able to find Happy in Fearless, and now the number advantage is in favor for the Titans, as well as the ult economy that they're going to be working with for this next fight.
The fact that the EMP was all they needed to be able to win that, you're absolutely right. That's four ultimates in the bank here for the Titans to work with. And they stop the outlaws from matching that progress and they get a chance to go back to this first checkpoint. If you're able to bring the bot back, then you unlock those forward spawns for yourself as well, which is exactly what the Titans want to be able to play around. Especially if they can elongate this distance here, try to get it towards the end of the trolley. That's giving them some time before the outlaws, if they get the bot back, end up shutting off those forward spawns. So let's see what Punk's able to do here. It's gonna have to beat the Pelican. Pulse Bomb first, see if that's able to hit its mark, but Titans have so much to work with. The Rally activate from Violet as he gets shut down from Aspire. Yes, it results in him going down here too, but it was worth it here. That Rally no longer a threat. Pelican falling incredibly low, using up on the recall. Punk manages to get away in time. Right by this corner, it's absolutely huge because you have the natural cover of where the bus is over to the left side, the archway here too, before trying to re-engage while Sugar Free is rounding up to the third EMP that we've seen so far. Sugar Free has been absolutely outpacing Happy here. Happy does have the nice. EMP online, is able to land its mark there, but the Titans are still up and running. For now, but not for very long after Violet is done with them. It was a follow-up from the EMP, thanks to Happy, for mm -hmm. the rest of the Outlaws to finally get some extra progress on this bot necro. But this is where you see the Titans able to start playing into their strengths. Sugar Free with the EMP ready to go. That's three versus Happy's second one. You could just get this all set up here, and the Titans are already back fighting in the neutral. And finding Crimson is going to be a huge pick for them because then they don't have that nano boost to work with. The Outlaws are going to finally find some of that extra room with this bot, but Sugar Free, you, we've seen it already happen before, and especially on that second map. He's going to be looking to annihilate the Outlaws with this EMP. Let's see how he moves in here, if he can try to isolate this back line. So you see Punk trying to dive in, but then he gets put to sleep, and then the Anti on top of it. Sugar Free's holding onto this EMP this time, just waiting for the opportunity to have Punk restabilize. The Nana Boost onto Faith is now going to allow Faith to get aggressive to help out Punk. The EMP was unleashed onto Pelican, but not the follow-ups that we were expecting from it. Violet also got hacked in the back here too, and Happy was able to find Crimson. No support left for the Titans and no sustainability as the Outlaws are able to hold back the Titans once again. This is a position we've seen the Outlaws in before. Do you remember New Queen Street yesterday? Oh my where it looked goodness. like Florida Mayhem had an insurmountable lead over the Outlaws. And then we saw the overtime of a lifetime come out here from Houston to be able to end up taking that map and bringing us to a map number five. Houston Outlaws are no stranger to this position. They still have three minutes to work with now, 245 and they've got an EMP to boot. Vicky, they're not out of this one yet. It looks like they might even be able to chart to match that progress and take it away from the Titans if they end up playing their cards right. Something that they've already witnessed and have done before, Necra. Insane game that they're looking to replicate here as the EMP comes out and Aspire gets deleted by Pelican from the follow-up that we currently see. Punk also gets hacked. He gets melted down. Love these follow-ups that we're currently seeing between Happy, Pelican, and Fearless right now. You're going to see the rally coming in from Violet to allow the rest of the outlaws to move forward, clear up the space that they need to from the retreating Titans. Scared as they're going to be able to get up to that same checkpoint here. Now rounding right in front of Titans in terms of meters, nearing that 92 meter mark. Houston Outlaws are taking back control. They're taking control of the game. Vicky, they may just win the series here as Happy's able to take out Sugar Free. And we're entering into some two minute territory. That They have they're to stop here. This is crazy right now. Punk is trying to jump in, gets flailed all the way back. He's got the primal right now. And after I currently see Crimson getting hacked again, he's got that nano boost ready for this next fight. They need it. They need to get this impact desperately, especially Titans, off of fight. Sugar Free that's about yep. to get this EMP now. Put up a fight. Come on, Titans. This is your time to shine. Oh, the stick into the recall. They find Violet. That's going to be big. The Nana boost from Shu onto Fearless. Punk does take a nap here. He's got the Primal to also reset. They trade that as Punk is going to be able to find Shu. No backline left for the Outlaws. All this extra credit, they're going to be forced back. And this is just what the Titans needed in this situation because that momentum from the Outlaws would have been scary. Still going to be a pretty big meterage lead as you come through. 40 meters basically to boot here for the Outlaws. And the Titans, they're going to be able to bring this bot back to the neutral. But look at these forward spawns paying off in dividends here for the Outlaws. They get a chance to meet this bot before it even reaches that halfway point. And the Outlaws are already getting set up into a position 
But they run into <gasps> What? That's huge. That is huge here. The EMP now. Aspire gets a fall. They clear up three from the outlaws, and it's only up to Pelican and Happy to stall and stay on this bot, but they're going to want to back away in time to regroup with the rest of this team because you have less than 30 seconds now on the clock for the Titans to even things out and get more of that credit. Okay, the forward spots have been shut off here. Titans are starting to enter into their own territory to be able to start pushing this bot as you do see Happy start getting set up in the back line because this is where the Outlaws want to close it out here. They've got the meterage lead. They've got the ultimate economy. They've Ooh. just got to be able to hit their mark, Vicky, and they are on their way to the midseason. Oh, they spy check Happy backing away. Pelican sending out the pulse bomb they know exactly what happy's looking out for you can see faith looking to his back feeling about overtime activated the back line on this high ground separated from the team here they got a round up to the side and the emp comes in only finding sugar free still punk has that primal faith activates the rally here yes aspire gets hacked but he's about to get the pulse bomb shu and violet are incredibly low and they find the back line of the outlaws the vancouver titans have the advantage happy still fights crimson here it's faith leading up to the sustainability for the rest the Titans. You can't knock them down. This is not Levi out here as the Outlaws need to watch out. Violet makes a desperate spot over to the Lucio. Overtime ticking away and the Titans have nobody blocking their sight as the rest of the Outlaws are desperately trying to make their way. You've got the Outlaws though with the forward spawns as they're going to have a little bit of that spawn advantage but the Titans they need their reinforcements to come through. Punk takes another one down. Vicky the Titans might do it here. Blast after blast as Punk is going to be able to now jump in, harass the back line. He gets put to sleep after the nano boost was put on to Punk here. Violet got set down earlier on. Faith was right there. What? Oh, it's, what? They got off the bot? No, they well, got thought, off the bot. I thought Faith was right there. Faith was no. right there. Faith was right there. Necra. Look at the outlaws laughing. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, Pelican's clapping. You know, we take those. But oh that was God. so close. There's no way. Punk was holding forward to prevent the rest of the outlaws from getting that forward spawn that you had called out earlier. Faith was right there next to the bot. That's so devastating. You can see the emotion in the Titans' faces. They weren't expecting that either. They figured they had somebody there to be able to contest the cart. But the outlaws, they were able to, I guess, get the pressure on the board. I don't know what happened there really to allow the, yeah, to allow the Titans to get off the bot. Necrom, what happened happened at that point. Unfortunately, they were very close to the bot. Again, Faith was literally right there. You saw at the end, and maybe it looked like he had shield bash and it was already too late. The overtime had already ticked away at that point. But they were set up to win that next engagement. You, yes, the nano boost was put already onto Punk. He had moved forward. They took out one of the back lines here for the outlaws. And man, the outlaws, you saw them laughing at the end. You know, it is what it is. They're going to laugh after that. They're going to be able to take the series in a 3-1 fashion. But we're going to highlight one player in particular, Necra, and it's going to be Pelican as the player of the match. Oh, Pelican. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to move swiftly onward from, from what happened on the bot and start to sing the praises of Pelican, one of the star DPS of the Houston Outlaws. Whether it was the Tracer, the Echo, we ended up seeing so much come out from this particular player. And I feel like every time we look at Pelican, he just gets better and better. Yeah, Pelican being an insane player. We saw what he was able to cook up with Fearless too. The follow-ups that we were able to see earlier on, as well as the attempts when they had uh, Gargoyle move in on Rialto. Pelican though is one of those players where he is insane when it comes to harassing that back line. Of course, being that Tracer player and being that all-star player to really put in the damage. You could see 8.2K damage from that last match alone, by the way, with 15.7 Elims. And by the way, take a look at those deaths. His survivability was absolutely insane. He only died two times, I believe, in that last map alone while taking, <laughs> what, like 17 elims with nine final blows? Yeah, it was absolutely nuts. I feel like Pelican is one of those forces that you absolutely need to be on your toes with because if you don't see him, he's probably on your supports in the back line, and that's just <sighs> not good for your team.
No, it isn't, and it's not also not good to get off the cart. The Titans may have gotten off the cart, Thank but you, hopefully please. the desk hasn't gotten off their own seats. So we're gonna first. toss it over to the desk, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. What a series that we had at the end. Oh. No. <laughs> oh help. Toss it over to the desk, by the way. Desk, we're ready to please help. <laughs> yeah. Please, please help us. Save Necro from her. Oh, yeah. Save Necro. Save Necro. <laughs> Necro's uh, suffering so much. We oh. are with you though, Vicky and Necro. That was that was a heartbreaker. That was that one hurt. That, that one rough. hurt. It actually hurt. But what a fight the Vancouver Titans put up here. I think they really, really gave the Houston Atlas a run for their money there. I think it was overall a really great performance by a team that I don't think many people would expect to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, you know, the greats of the Houston Outlaws. Uh, if you can hang with like a guy like Fearless, uh, you're making a case for yourself. I, oh. I, my Dark Horse pick is looking good. Yeah. Right. Actually, yeah. Nice. Better than mine. Better than mine. <laughs> the underdog picks, I mean, I think I still have the match somewhere down here, so we can go ahead and bring this back. No. Yeah, it will, there will be a time okay. to, to put them out. Now is not the time. Because <laughs> I really need to focus. Now I can't take anyone serious wearing a dog face. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the highlights of this match. There were plenty to choose from, as Vancouver Titans really, really tried to go all the way with it. They did manage to take one match away how did they get that done uh well it was mostly off the back of aspire honestly on that um rialto you know being able to play the core hit scan that's what he's really known for that's his specialization and the outlaws almost made a hold but just just not quite so that was quite the quite the match here but overall i think fearless on the winston every time he came in he was such an impact player making it so hard even though i think faith and crimson played really well they made themselves very hard to kill, very hard targets. Still, it's just too difficult with the EMPs, the pulse bombs uh, coming in from Happy and Pelican to assist Fearless. It's a tough test for even even very strong players. I think as well when we kind of look at this team and like you know the Houston Outlaws versus the Vancouver Titans, I think this is kind of showing a little bit of that gap between like what like the tier is where it's like you have those highest tiers like Houston in that top fighting against Atlanta and Boston, and then there's just like this drop off, and that's where we see the Titans who are putting up a good fight in this series, but just the firepower is not there to match up towards this like super cannon that you have of the Houston Outlaws where you're throwing uh, you're throwing fearless out of it throwing shoe out of it like all of these players who have these big names and they're just what while I think Jake is completely right that the backline played really well I thought Aspire and Sugar Free looked good too it is just a different beast when you have these caliber of players operating at such a high level Absolutely, and just being able to, you know, see how consistently. Granted, you're, you're right. Vancouver does come in with at least a worthy attempt, and allowing themselves to still be looked at as a team that can be competitive. But that differentiation in ranking is very visible. Yeah, but it's. Uh, I mean, it really bodes well for a team like the Vancouver Titans here, uh, considering that, you know, we do think that Houston Outlaws are in the top three. The midfield, however, that is hardly contested. Yeah, and Vancouver yeah. Titans are establishing themselves as being on top of that midfield. Maybe even the gatekeepers into the upper echelons in the Overwatch League. And I don't think that this is the team that people had their eyes on heading into it. But after just five weeks of play, they really proved that they are able to hang with the greats out there, which is just absolutely fantastic. Now we do want to talk about our winners a little more, and we do have an interview with uh, Junk Buck, the coach from the Houston Outlaws. Thank you so much for joining us, and congrats on the W. Hello, hello, thank you. Uh, hi, Junk Buck, nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. You have to be here. Why are you having uh, so much fun? My there? bad, my bad. Just taking a long break, <laughs> you know. Just keep, keep sending the paychecks. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back soon. None of them have bounced yet. We're good. Yeah, none of us. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll go first, Junk. So you guys are, are officially secured going to Korea now, getting that buy. How does that feel? I mean, I think that, that tournament is looking very competitive. How does it feel to just sort of have your ticket punched? Uh, Nothing, nothing. I don't feel anything yet, to be honest. I think mm. well, <laughs> until, okay. until we win everything, I don't think nothing. I, I, I'm not going to feel anything, to be honest. Yeah, that's a very chunk my guess. All right, so I'm going to ask more so in regards to kind of just the performance as a whole. I mean, all of these players have put in so much work, so much effort getting to this point, now securing that spot. Is there any player specifically that you've seen really be able to elevate and has put in that extra work that you've admired over the course of these weeks to allow your team to play as proficiently as they have been? So, in our team, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so, our team, actually, 
I think everybody's obviously good. We're all like known to be good players, but especially like Pelican and Happy, they had to start playing the roles that they were not like specialized in, I would say. Mm -hmm. But then I think they're playing to the level to match like all the top players. Like, I think even if I were to compare them as like the the so-called communities S tier chasers or <laughs> whatever, I think they're playing up to that level. Awesome. So you yeah, know, and, and also Violet. Oh. Violet also playing. All right, there you go. Uh, <laughs> you like to make one of them, but and yeah, so I think he's getting there. So you you know you've confirmed yourself to go to Korea for the midseason madness. I was wondering, Jungkook, if there's any teams that have caught your eye in the East or anything you're kind of looking forward to playing against that region. You know, going over to that side of the pond, I guess, or the ocean. Is there anyone that really that you want to face more so than anyone else over there? The East region? Um, no, they're bad. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. The How fire is watching the fire I mean, fair, you know, uh, you gotta put your money where your mouth is when you face off against them in Korea. So let's hope that one uh, ages well. <laughs> Jump out, one last question. <laughs> I love that. Uh, one last question for you. I mean, Hughes Natlas, you are just a juggernaut we have currently, you and Atlanta Rain. Like, you're really just so far apart from the mid table teams we're having. What do you think makes the team so successful right now? Huh, what makes them successful? I think just just a lot of good players being very coordinated and having what was it having a right what was a role and play style is making all the teams good. So not just I would say not just 